Hello, welcome to this presentation by FERN, the Foundation for the Education and Research in Neurological Emergencies. This educational lecture is titled, The Evaluation of Emergency Department Dizziness Patients, New Concepts. My name is Edward Sloan. I am currently Medical Director of the Physician Assistance Studies Program at Dominican University. I have most recently been an attending physician at Carl Foundation Hospital, and I am Professor Emeritus in the Department of Emergency Medicine at the University of Illinois at Chicago. Support for the development of this lecture was provided by EB Medicine. I am currently President and Board Chair of FERN. The content for this lecture comes in large part by the monograph titled The Timing and Triggers Approach to the Patient with Acute Dizziness by Jonathan Edlow. It was published in Emergency Medicine Practice by EB Medicine, December 2019. Other parts of this educational lecture and the complete lecture are available at the Fern.org website or on our YouTube Fern.org channel. Also available is the June 2020 podcast, which was presented to participants in 46 countries, as well as a CME option on the EB Medicine website at ebmedicine.net, as well as at the specific website address noted below. Please note the disclaimer listed below. In general, this information is intended to augment and not replace the clinical judgment that guides the management of any individual patient. Lastly, let's talk about dizziness in the setting of COVID-19 infection. I would refer you to the more detailed discussion of headache and COVID-19, during which I discussed all the aspects of COVID-19 that are relevant, especially when excluding life-threatening headaches. These are present and linked through our fern.org website and our YouTube channel. But let's briefly go through some key concepts about COVID-19 and how they relate to dizziness. The CNS mechanisms, ACE2 receptors are the binding site for the virus. The virus likes brain access through the nasal olfactory epithelium and the CNS capillary endothelial lining. There's hypoxic injury with COVID-19. There's immune injury and SIRS. We know there can be neuromyopathies that occur, and we know that the COVID-19 virus has a direct neurotropism, which means it prefers neurotissue. It can cause a nosmia or a jusia, which is loss of smell and taste. We know that in general, there are three types of neurosymptoms with COVID-19, CNS findings, dizziness, headache, altered mental status, CVA, ataxia, seizure, peripheral, taste, smell, vision problems, nerve pain, and skeletal muscle injury or neuromuscular problems. We know that there's both a viral infection phase and a headache that can occur with hypoxia and or the later cytokine storm. We know that there's headache in up to one third of hospitalized patients with COVID-19. We know that COVID-19 can cause peripheral trigeminal neuralgia. We know that meningoencephalitis can occur. These are some case reports of patients who had seizures, syncope, needed to be treated with acyclovir and antibiotics. Uh, This is a case of a young man, nine days of fever, headache, fatigue. You must consider COVID-19 during this pandemic. In this case, he was found unresponsive, emesis, and his hippocampus had suggestion of meningitis. They're also in the temporal lobe. Here's a case of two children, 112, 115, with orbital cellulitis and pansinusitis. Both required surgical intervention. We know that CNS venous thrombosis can occur. A thrombus can occur. Stroke symptoms can be found. There can be some sinus problems with this. Low molecular weight heparin is indicated. And you can have straight up stroke or CNS thrombosis, arterial thrombosis. This is a case of a 64-year-old male with a wake-up stroke who had had COVID symptoms 16 days prior with fever and myalgias. What about dizziness and COVID-19? So we know that COVID-19 virus is neurotropic. It likes to go to nervous uh, nerves or nervous tissue. Where is that most commonly found? In the CNS and in the gut. 
So COVID-19 can cause dizziness via these following mechanisms. Direct labyrinth or vestibular nerve effects where it causes one side to become diseased. It can cause CNS or head or neck infections. It can cause dehydration or hypovolemia or orthostasis if patients have flu symptoms and they feel so sick that they don't even drink, they just sleep and hope to get better. It can cause dizziness through CNS venous thrombosis. And it can cause CNS posterior circulation thrombosis directly in the arterial tree of your central nervous system. In conclusion, the ATTEST system for the evaluation of the dizzy patient includes the following. A, associated symptoms. T, T, timing and triggers. E, S, examination signs. And T, confirmatory testing. A test. When evaluating an ED patient with dizziness, please consider the following. Using the ATTEST system for evaluating ED dizzy patients, those patients with acute, severe, continuous symptoms should be considered to have acute vestibular syndrome. Patients who have intermittent symptoms or non-continuous symptoms at the time of evaluation are noted to either have triggered or spontaneous episodes of dizziness and vertigo. Topping the list of diagnoses using the ATTEST system are orthostasis, BPPV or benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, and posterior stroke. BPPV can be diagnosed with the Dix Hallpike maneuver and can be treated with the Epley maneuver either in the emergency department or in follow up. It is noted that you should evaluate patients with caution in the setting of the COVID 19 pandemic as the COVID virus can cause neurological symptoms and or can complicate those neurological symptoms because of poor PO intake and dehydration, which can cause orthostasis. Electronic medical record templates and dot phrases can help to make the exam process more systematic and easily accomplished using the ATTEST system. When evaluating dizziness patients in the emergency department, the following is recommended. Understand that the dizziness pathologies using the ATTEST system fall into three diagnostic strata and basically involve six diagnoses and three specific treatments for those diagnoses. Also recommended is that you study the nystagmus findings, significance, and BPPV maneuvers, Hall, Pike, and Epley, online and in the monograph from which this lecture was obtained. Also, create EMR templates and dot phrases to exclude posterior stroke findings in your dizzy patients in the emergency department. Explain the etiology of the dizziness, including the diagnosis and treatment, and provide appropriate referral for patients with dizziness, explaining to them symptoms which should cause them to come back to the emergency department for repeat evaluation. Lastly, Utilize caution when evaluating dizziness patients in the emergency department in the setting of COVID-19, as this virus has both neurological complications and symptoms and can cause orthostasis due to decreased PO intake. If you have specific questions related to this educational content, please send an email to fern.org at gmail.com. We encourage you to go to the fern.org website for more content related to this educational program and other content related to the care of patients who present to the emergency department with acute illness and injury related to neurological emergencies. Thank you for your participation in this Fern educational program.